Hi, I'm Thomas. Welcome back. Our topic is differential equations. In this lesson, we'll learn to formulate, solve, and interpret a differential equation. Our problem reads, the rate of increase of the radius r of an oil slick at time t is inversely proportional to the square of the radius. When the slick was first observed, the radius was 3 kilometers. Two days later, it was 5 kilometers. Find to the nearest day when the radius will be 6 kilometers, and explain what happens to the rate of growth of the radius as t increases. In this scenario, we're not given the differential equation, so our first task will be to create one. In our algorithm, step one, set up differential equation. In reading this word problem, we need to interpret the components of the word problem into the differential equation. First, the rate of increase of the radius r of an oil slick indicates a rate of change, and that is a rate of change in the radius, so dr over with respect to what? We keep reading at time t with respect to time. So our differential equation will be dr over dt equals, we continue reading, is inversely proportional to the square of the radius. Here we have an inversely proportional relationship. So our setup is going to be our constant of proportionality, k, divided by the given metric. In this case, that is the square of the radius, k over r squared. If this were a directly proportional relationship, our setup would be k times r squared. In this case, we now have our differential equation. Step two, separate variables. We want to get the r terms on the left side of the equation and the t terms on the right side of the equation. So we'll multiply by r squared, and we will set this with respect to r. We're going to be integrating equals also an integral. The t term is already on the right side of the equation. Now, th now there is no t. Right now, we simply have the constant k. But we're going to integrate with respect to t, which is step three, apply integration rules. The integral of r squared is 1 third times r to the power of 3 equals the integral of k. Keeping in mind k is a constant, the variable we're integrating with respect to is t. So we end up with k times t plus our constant of integration, c. That completes step four of the algorithm. There is no simplification. Let's move on to step six. If initial conditions given, find a particular solution. We want to find the value of k and find the value of c. So in step six, let's evaluate the two sets of initial conditions we're given. Reading the second sentence, when the slick was first observed, the radius was three kilometers. First observed means time equals zero. In other words, f with an input of zero produces an output of three, using f as the name of this function. Now let's input both of these values into the equation in three. We have one third times radius cubed. Our radius is three, so three cubed equals k times t t in this case is 0 plus c. Notice what happens when we multiply k times 0. The k term disappears. We're left with 1 third times 3 cubed is 9 equals c. We have a second condition given in the third sentence that we're about to analyze, but note something important in comparing the two conditions we're given. The first one that we just used has a t value of 0. When the slick was first observed, when time is 0, that t value of 0 is what caused the k to disappear. If we were to start with 2 days later it was 5 kilometers, then the t value wouldn't be 0, the k term wouldn't disappear, and we wouldn't be able to solve for one of the parameters. This is a common scenario in differential equations. When you're given two different conditions, one is usually at time equals zero, or whatever your input value is equals zero. 
that condition enables you to cause one of the parameters to disappear so that you can solve for the other parameter and then go on with your second set of conditions as we're about to do now to solve for the remaining parameter. Now we can iterate to an updated equation one third times radius to the power of three equals kt plus instead of c we now have a value for c that value is nine. Let's go up to the third sentence two days later it was five kilometers f of two equals five. We'll input these values into the updated equation to find the value of k. One-third times radius cubed, the radius is five, five cubed equals k times t. In this case the value of t is two plus nine. And here simplifying we have two k equals five cubed is 125 divided by three plus nine which simplifies to k equals 49 over three. Now with a second iteration of the equation we arrived at in step three we have one third times radius cubed equals k times t we now know is 49 over 3 times t plus c which we know is 9. With this equation we can complete requirement a find to the nearest day when the radius will be 6 kilometers. We want an output of radius 6 1 third times 6 to the power of 3. The question is what input how much time do we need for that to happen 49 over 3t plus 9. We'll subtract 9 from both sides. On the left, 1 third times 6 to the power of 3 is 72. Minus 9 is 63 equals 49 over 3t. We can divide both sides by 49 over 3 which gives us on the left 3.86 equals t. In 3.86 days the radius will be 6 kilometers. In our requirement we want the nearest day so we will say that t approximates 4 days. And for part b explain what happens to the rate of growth of the radius as t increases Let's look back at the differential equation in step one. dr over dt, the change in radius with respect to time, equals some constant of proportionality over the square of the radius. We know the constant of proportionality we've calculated as a positive value. In other words, the change in radius is positive, which means the radius is continually growing. Our requirement is to evaluate the rate of growth. Notice that radius squared is in the denominator. As the radius gets bigger, the denominator gets bigger and the value gets smaller. In other words, as t increases, rate of growth of r decreases. The radius continues to grow but over time at a decreasing rate. We've completed our requirements. This concludes differential equations example three.